Hi guys and welcome to another edition of Smack Down Spoilers, guys. Um, uh, quite frankly, I think Smackdown's gonna suck today. And uh, yeah, by the way, I want to briefly talk about something because um, a few people were saying, you know, Jerry, you're leaving the product, uh, the WWE product. Um, what I said in the video was that I was sick of the WWE Network product. To me personally, I don't see anything special with the network. Um, also, I'd rather have Spotify than the WWE Network. I mean, come on. Um, honestly, I don't know what is so special about the network, and that is one of the main reasons why I unsubscribed and shit like that. Um, I really can't understand why, um, you know, like, apart from maybe the Edge and Christian show, but, like, uh, the Camp WWE thing was crap. You had, um, all these TV specials, and basically a lot of people don't notice this, but you ever notice them documentaries? They are actually clips of past documentaries that they repackage in a new documentary and throw it out there. They only just get a guy to just narrate it. <coughs> those documentaries, those new documentaries, are not original. They haven't been done this year or last year. They've been done, like, years ago. You understand what I mean? Like, WWE Rivals, right? WWE Rivals, like, people were making into a big thing last year. WWE Rivals, right? The, the, the Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy footage was actually taken from years and years and years ago, and they just repackaged it. So, personally, for me, I don't see anything special about the network. Again, that's just my opinion. I do understand that people want to see past um, matches. That's fine. But I'm not going to watch past matches fucking every day. You know, you understand what I mean? And I just wanted to see more better original content. It's one of the reasons why I subscribed to it. And that's the main problem I have. So hopefully that clears up a few things. Um, but anyway, we're moving forward to SmackDown spoilers right now. Um, this comes courtesy of NodyQ. Um... And uh, we're going to get into SmackDown spoilers right now. I'm also going to get into Vince McMahon um, at the very end of SmackDown spoilers. So if you're looking to just check that out, skip the very bottom of the video and it'll be there. Um, so anyway, let's get into it. Let's not waste any time. This week's episode of SmackDown kicks off with Dean Ambrose cutting in ring promo. Oh, this ain't good. About Chris Jericho. The lights go out and Jericho appears in the ring and Ambrose is let out. Jericho pulls out a straight jacket and proceeds to beat Ambrose but doesn't put him in it. Jericho stands tall as referees separate the two. Huh. Are you fucking serious? So let me get this straight, okay? So Dean Ambrose goes to cut an in-ring promo. You have Jericho come out with a straight jacket. But he doesn't put him in it. So, the, the stupid fucking dumb thing that you were supposed to do, you didn't even do anyway. So, basically, all we got was Chris Jericho beat up Dean Ambrose. That, that was it. That was, that, that, was sma that was the start of SmackDown. That was the start of SmackDown. So, yeah. Big, absolute nothing. Terrible start to this right now. Rusev is backstage ranting about what happened on Raw. Anyway, I don't even know what to say about that. Actually, do you know what? I agree with Rusev. He should be ranting. Rusev defeated Sin Cara um, in the match. Um, and I'm even more pissed off now because they knew they fucked up. But the difference is, though, is that nobody is going to watch SmackDown. Nobody watches SmackDown, guys. Let's just call it like it is. They either tune in for the spoilers. They either go to NoDQ or PW Torch or whatever that does the spoilers. They check it a little bit. And even that, some people don't even fucking check out the spoilers. They just watch Raw. As a matter of fact, some people are even skipping Raw and just watching on YouTube now. It's getting to that point. But that's besides the point. The point is, is that, yes, Rusev has beaten Sin Cara. It's a good thing. The problem is, though, you should have done it all wrong. You shouldn't have done it on SmackDown. If you're going to do something, go the whole way about it. But if you're going to do it half assed and say, oh, we might have messed up. Rusev defeated Sin Cara. Also, the problem is, though, with this, is that this is going to lead into a feud. And this is a feud that nobody wants to see. Nobody wants to see Rusev against Sin Cara. They want to see Rusev maybe as a monster. Uh, Rusev was actually interested until he got buried about a hundred fucking times. And they've messed up his entire character. Rena Young interviews Emma backstage. Really couldn't give a shit about that. Um, um, Dana Brooke defeated Becky Lynch. Um, okay... 
Oh my god. You're not going to believe what they did. Okay, so, um, a lot of you, some of you may not have liked the, um, uh, might have not liked the replay of the six-man match. They did a replay of it on SmackDown. They did an actual, a raw replay of that match that nobody liked, and they replayed it on SmackDown. Excellent. Oh, absolutely brilliant. Thrilling. But the segment with Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. AJ Styles approaches and promises to take care of Roman Reigns if he interferes in their match against the Usos tonight. Um, Aiden English defeated Kofi Kingston. Really couldn't give a crap. Backseat segment Roman Reigns and the Usos. Um, okay, the Usos defeated Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson via disqualification. Oh my god. Again with the disqualifications. What is the point, if you're going to have these guys in a match, in a tag match, then go all out. Have them win or whatever, I don't know. Have have Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson beat the Usos clean, just fucking annihilate them. Nobody gives a shit about the Usos. Have Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson defeat the Usos, but they're not going to do that. No, 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 they're not going to do that. No, because they have to do these qualifications, throw it out of their fucking ass. Bad six segment with R-Truth building a selfie stick. Oh my Jesus fucking Christ. Ah, oh, come on! Come on! Bad six segment of uh, R-Truth building a selfie stick out of an actual stick with Tyler Breeze and Fandango trying to teach Goldust how to dance. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, uh. They are life lesson segment with um, Bob Backlund and Darn Young. Uh, yes, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know, Bob Backlund and Darn Young are now going to be um, doing their own kind of group now, which it could be interesting. Our chief and Tyler Breeze defeated Fandango and Goldust. So hang on, our chief and Tyler Breeze. I don't know why I've lost track of all this shit. Um. Another video was shown for the Shining Stars. I don't know what the hell that is. Renee Young interviews Ric Flair and WWE Women's Champion Charlotte. My God, this is boring. Charlotte says that what happened on Raw was a travesty. Flair promises Charlotte will retain at Extreme Rules. And to finish it all off for the biggest pile of shit with a cherry on top on top of a dingleberry... Cesaro and Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens and the WWE um, Intercontinental Champion, uh, The Miz and Maurice end in a no contest. Uh, gonna give SmackDown a two out of ten. Um, complete garbage and completely hated it. I'm gonna get into this very quickly into this Vince McMahon news. There isn't actually a lot of news that came out today, so let's get into some of this news right now. Vince McMahon comments on the current roster. Um, during today's WWE conference call, Vince McMahon talked about WWE injuries heading into WrestleMania. Vince said that several stars will be returning soon, including Seth Rollins, Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt, and John Cena, which is, can't believe I'm saying this, might be actually a good thing for Raw. Vince also said that they have introduced 13 new stars um, recently, giving props to the NXT brand, he said. They will have more talent on the roster in the next 30 days than they ever have had before. Okay, so first thing we got a very interesting thing is is that it's saying it's the most roster he's ever going to have. The thing is with that is that it could be a brand extension. Usually when they're piling in a lot of people on it, um, they might do a brand extension, which I would welcome. Um, I, I would welcome that. I would welcome them trying to do storylines in SmackDown rather than what we just seen right now. Having actually solid storylines exclusively for SmackDown and a storyline exclusively for Raw. That was one of the things that I actually liked about SmackDown because, in my personal opinion, um, sometimes SmackDown was actually better than Raw at certain occasions. And um, that was actually one of the reasons why I do SmackDown spoilers. But, like I said, SmackDown right now has just become a big joke. Um... Uh, also, he says that um, he's introduced 13 new stars. Yeah, that's well and good, Vince. That's fantastic. But the difference is, though, is that some of them are garbage. Some of them literally will probably be released next year because they're not doing anything. In a year's time, 
they are, they won't be doing anything. Tyler Breeze is a perfect fucking example. People say that Tyler Breeze was supposed to be the next Shawn Michaels. Yes, the, like, they say the same thing with Morrison. They say the same thing with fucking Tyler Breeze and shit like that. Oh, he's the next Shawn Michaels. Is he the next Shawn Michaels? I think he's the next Shawn Michaels. Is he the next Shawn Michaels? Like, at the end of the day, these guys will probably be fired next year. Or they'll be stuck in some other shitty storyline that nobody cares about. Um... Honestly, though, I think that they need to build up this mid-card rapidly. Um, the quicker, the better, because stuff like this could happen again. What happens if Seth Rollins, Randy Orton, if, when he retires? What happens if Randy Orton retires? What happens if John Cena retires? Well, what's going to happen? The only main people that have been properly built is, you could argue Dean Ambrose, but what he's been doing recently, and it's not his fault, it's not his fault, but the, the stories that have put him in is quite diabolical. Seth Rollins, um, you know, obviously he's a solid guy, very good on the microphone, shit like that, he's pretty good, although some people can kind of get sick of him, Randy Orton might retire, and John Cena might retire in the next few years, don't think Cena's, I think there's more chance of Randy Orton retiring sooner rather than John Cena, I think John Cena, however, you know, it'll be another few years before he retires, but at the end of the day, what they gotta do is build solid storylines for this mid card, so that it essentially pushes up to the main event, so we, we, we could be interested in it, anyway guys, that was Vince McMahon's take on the um, current roster, um, he's probably kicking himself right now because he actually doesn't really like the NXT brand. Anyone that tells me otherwise, I don't know what to tell you, but Vinnie Mac hates it. Um, so yes, guys, thank you for watching. Make sure to take that time to subscribe and also like the video. I actually never say like the video, but yeah, take that time to subscribe and like the video and also comment as well. I'll read all your comments and shit like that. So thank you for watching, guys. And, uh, yes... Um, we're all moving ahead right now, um, Extreme Rules I think's coming up, um, I'm really not looking forward to it, uh, like I said, I think wrestling right now, it's been a bit slow, even the WWE news hasn't been great, so, anyway guys, thank you for watching, this is General Jerry on the General Jerry channel, signing out.